What is going on, everyone? This is Ninja Geek here, and of course, I'm bringing you another episode of The Walking Dead Reviews, reviewing episode 6, Always Accountable. So, as always, let's get right into this with the start that we obviously know what happens, that Daryl gets pushed in further into the woods where Sasha and Abraham are. They, they kind of split their ways, and we find out that Daryl ends up in this uh, forest that has been burned. Like, what the hell has happened here? You know, we don't know at the beginning part. Uh, we're kind of just still wondering, because you don't just wander upon a forest and it's just randomly burned. That's It just doesn't happen. So, of course, we end up finding out later what that means, but... Within The Walking Dead, the whole entire series as itself, I'd like to discuss some shots, some different scenes of points of views, uh, is that it is shot in first person for some of this as shooting in Daryl's perspective as he's kind of like zoning out and waking up with this new group that we see. Of course, we see some different POVs. Of course, the last most notably one has been when Glenn notably had died, but that's also controversy, which we'll talk about at the end of this episode yet again. Uh, but that was the last POV, I guess, shot you can say that we saw within The Walking Dead. But I like how they did this one where he's walking through the woods and what happened. It, it, we're kind of getting Daryl's perspective on it. Uh, just a different shot view. I like how the directors did it that way instead of just walking through and doing it like that. They kind of chose different shots to make it unique. And the next thing is that obviously we see the group that he finds. I'm not entirely sure on all the names. I know one of their names is Tina, who ends up dying. Obviously, that's how I know. But I don't recall the other two's names. But there's a man, and then he obviously is traveling with two girls. We don't know anything about these people. And obviously, there has been some kind of controversy between these three people and uh, another group that has been out there longer we've suspected obviously people are suspecting that it's negan's group because he has been casted in for the show confirmed but obviously we won't know until later episodes who this particular group is that has been trying to shoot at them or was shooting them or if that is a different group it seems like it's the same group but it's obviously not the wolves because the wolves don't carry around weapons there's just so much action going on between different groups here that it's kind of building up a suspense story that we're kind of finding out but apparently obviously this group of three was somewhat i guess afflicted with this other group that who is now trying to shoot at them and we don't obviously know who that is or who this group of three is apparently they're they tried to get away at one point from this other group we'll have to find out in later episodes but of course uh, Daryl is tied up and they lead him out further and he ends up, t- he obviously he wants to escape because he, he doesn't want to be with these people who he has nothing to know about he wants to get back to his own people and in doing so you know he takes this bag which uh, happens to be full of insulin which means technically obviously that one of the girls needs that they wouldn't have a bag of, or a box of that in with them if they didn't need it so Daryl ends up coming back to them to give it back. Now, cutting away from this area is sort of we kind of get the point on view of Abraham and Sasha doing their own thing. Obviously, Abraham wants to go out there looking for Daryl because obviously he's missing. What would I have done? I don't know. If if I was in that situation where I lost a group member like that, I would probably be the Abraham side and be like, let's go look for him. But Sasha is like, no, we need to stay here. Daryl is a hunter. He'll come back for us. And obviously that's what happens at the end of the episode, but they have differences there. And then another relational thing that obviously we saw at the end of last week's episode, how Rick wanted to get with Jesse and all these relationships going on within the show. We can see that here building up where Abraham actually wanted to get it on with Sasha. And there's the whole discrepancy there how that didn't uh, plan and fall into Abraham's hands. And another thing I want to talk about Abraham when we get into a little bit later in the episode, kind of uh, an interesting and probably one of the best parts about this episode is the shot scenes with Abraham. But of course, we'll get into that uh, within when time tells. So of course, Dale tr- Daryl, not Dale, Daryl tries to return the bag uh, when we cut back to him, to, to uh, the group that was there, and then of course this particular group who we obviously don't know yet comes up and tries to find Daryl and these three people, and one of the group members ends up getting bitten because he just wasn't paying attention, and then they end, anyways the group ends up leaving, 
and they never find them. So I guess that was a good thing that they didn't end up finding Daryl and those and people because obviously that would have been bad. So they were able to escape them and leave these people. So we got a glimpse of what might come into the future with how these people act. But obviously they know how to do things since he got in and they took off his own arm and then they ended up leaving the entire scene uh, in general. Now getting into my favorite part of the episode is the lighting that they choose to show here. So obviously Abraham is, I guess you could say, going a little insane, kind of sort of how Sasha was after she lost her brother Tyrese. Uh, Abraham is kind of getting sort of the same feeling here because he feels like he, he, he wants to do everything his way, like he wants to be in control, and Sasha's basically telling him how it should be and this and that. So he's kind of getting a little agitated at this, and he obviously he goes out to take point and take guard, but he ends up going and, and looking for more supplies and probably even trying to look for Daryl at that, but he goes out there and he ends up finding this military truck full with RPGs and cigars, of course. I mean, what better? And the lighting is the best part about this scene here, because from the beginning of this scene to the end, it really shows you how much Abraham let goes. Like, in this picture right here, this is before it goes into that crazy walker sequence where he's trying to fight with him on the fence, like, over the top ridge. And you can see here in the background that everything around him is white. There's no blue as in, like, the sky. It's just kind of, like, the sky on the right side, and then it fades into this giant white area behind him, as in his mind is, like... It's not all the way there. It's kind of going insane right now. Then the scene happens, of course, where he's just getting attacked and he he's trying to fight off the walker, trying to be himself, trying to be in control of the walker almost. He ends up backing off. And as soon as that happens, the sky immediately starts to turn into a blue, bright day with, with puffy clouds behind them. By the end, we could see in this picture, he's just happily smoking a cigar, and the, the sky is just blue with patches of white. There's no absolute white behind him, which kind of signifies that, yes, he was going insane, but then he lifted himself out of that area and trying to be more realistic with life, and he, it's like he almost came back in a sense. And now the sky is blue, it's bright, instead of just a white insanity, just plain background, nothing. So I like how they did that. I don't know if they meant to do that on purpose, but I definitely did pick up on that. Favorite part of the episode. Now, one thing that wasn't my favorite part of the episode was Tina, because we obviously don't know much about her. We don't much about know much about any of these characters, and she just walks out there, oh, like, this is, uh, this is people that we used to know, we used to babysit, yada, yada. And she just instantly ends up dying, because she just walked right, I honestly think she just walked right into death. And she was obviously a minor character, as are, I think, these three people are, but we'll have to see where the show goes from there. Well, these two people now, since Tina's dead... Uh, yeah, so I don't think she made the right decision, and then of course, Daryl, if you remember back to the beginning when they came up with this, Rick wants to ask the three known questions to every survivor that they met, so Daryl does the same thing with this guy, and at first, this guy kind of reminds me of Dale, he said, you know, asked him how many people, how many walkers he's killed, first of all, uh, how many people has he killed, none, and why? Because he said the world would never go back, you know, you, there would never be going any, any back, and at first, I, I honestly connected him with a sort of Dale, and it may still be the connection there with Dale, because Dale felt the same way back in, in uh, Season 2, if we can remember how uh, they Rick and everyone wanted to kill Randall, but everyone else wanted him dead. Dale said, obviously, there would be no going back, because the world that we knew... The, the people that were in it, or it, it would be just gone if they went through and actually killed Randall. And I see the connection here between this guy and Dale, as in, you know, it's basically saying the same thing. I don't know. I just saw it personally. And then, of course, he had to just not agree. Like, Daryl said something to him uh, about going in, back to see his friends, and then they just took off with his bike. So he basically had nothing, and he ended up finding a truck buried deep within this woods, which I don't know how it ended up being there, but it was just there, this, like, oil kind of truck. And he brought it back. He obviously found Sasha and Abraham by complete luck, but I'm pretty sure he went back to the area that he was in before, so that's kind of how he knew how to do that. And at the end of the episode, we obviously know what happens. He, Daryl tries to get in contact with Rick, and then there's a voice over the walkie that just says, Help. And I'm going to play that voice here so we can determine what that is. Help. Okay. 
So, first, when I first heard that on TV, when I first heard it, and I, keep in mind I watched TV the first time with headphones on, I thought that it was Glenn. I said, definitely, that sounds like Glenn. Then going back and watching it, I'm like, uh, I don't know if that really sounds so much like Glenn. So, uh, and it definitely is not Rick. I can tell you that. That doesn't sound... If Rick was on there, he would have been more like, you know, he would have tried to get more in contact. Uh, it seems like it could be Glenn because he's trapped, so he only says one word. And it could sound like Glenn, but it also could sound like that guy who may be in help. Because obviously he had one of uh, more walkies in that bag that obviously he took stuff from Daryl and the crossbow and everything. So it could end up being that. But what do you guys think is that on the walkie talkie because I thought it was Glenn. Now I'm kind of leaning more towards the other way, but it definitely is not Rick. We obviously know that. I don't know who would think it would be because it doesn't sound anything like him. So that is the end of the episode. If you did enjoy it, leave a like and subscribe for more content. November is a definitely a busy month for doing YouTube, but I'm happy to do these episodes here. So anyways, that's the end. I'm the Geek. I'll see you in whatever my next video happens to be. I'm out. Peace.